Hey guys, D Machine here. Uh, I just wanted to make a, uh, a guide on rep retribution in patch 4.2 and uh, some PvP tips. I've been watching a lot of um, Retribution Paladin uh, guide videos for patch 4.2, and a lot of them don't touch base on uh, some really important things. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is the spec. Now there's two different types of specs. Um, the first and most uh, I don't know, U spec is uh, is basically the same retribution tree, but they go into improved hammer of justice. Um, this can be really, this can be really good. It can be utilized in a lot of different ways, but at the same time, it's not necessarily the best, in my opinion, for um, 3v3 bracket or even in any bracket really, because uh, I don't know, it's just too. Uh, you're not utilizing everything that you have to offer by uh, taking Improved Hammer of Justice over Blast Word, which is the other spec. I'll talk about that in a second. A lot of people go into the Retribution Tree, uh, nearly the same build as the one I have right here, and then they go down and they get Improved Hammer of Justice, and then they, uh, and then they get 2 out of 2 Arbiter of Light. That's all really good. That's basically that spec. Another spec that I don't really see anyone talking about, but I see on a lot of high-rated rep paladins, this is the one that you're looking at, if not tweaked a little bit here and there. In the Retribution Tree, you want to uh, get basically everything in the first two rows, besides uh, Eye for an Eye. Uh, uh, you don't want to get Divine Storm. Divine Storm is not for PvP. Same with Sanctity of Battle, there's not that much haste on the PvP gear, so it's kind of useless. Uh, I only got 2 out of 3 for Art of War because it's not really... Um, I don't know, didn't take priority over other things. Uh, rule of Law uh, is really important, you need to get Rule of Law. Um, that's good, you should get uh, Guardian's Favor, 2 out of 2. Same for uh, Sanctified Wrath, you should get 3 out of 3 of that, for obvious reasons. Selfless Healer, Selfless Healer is the reason why we are even really viable in 3v3. We don't put as much constant pressure as Warriors, and our burst is about the same as a Feral Druid, if played right. So, Selfless Healer is what makes you, I don't know, more wanted than other classes, and you're really not. But there is some comps that uh, Selfless Healer works with. So the reason why Selfless Healer is so good is because uh, it, it reduces the cooldown of Border Glory, and the effect of like, how much you heal by 50% more, which is crazy. That's so much more healing. So when you're off healing your partners, you're healing for 50% more, and then when you crit with it, you're critting for 150%. So ultimately, you're healing 200% higher on your teammates. The reason why that's so good is because uh, they're get I don't know uh, the current arenas. Uh, they're walking away from uh, the burstiness, and they're looking more towards uh, CC training, which is why RLS is working. Mage Lock Shaman, really anything with like that focuses on that um, that controlling aspect. It's always kind of been like that. Uh, PMR is back and stuff like that because CC is so crazy. So when you're a DPS and you're the one, and you're keeping up the focus target, that's really nice to have and it will save you a lot if used right. Um, as for Arts of Sacrifice or Acts of Sacrifice, I only went one out of two. I went one out of two just for the cleanse. The uh, percentage of cooldown reduction isn't worth the other talent. And so I only went two out of two in Seals of Pure. Um, it's speculation whether or not you should get Eternal Glory over Seals of Pure. I got Seals of Pure because I've tried both specs and the RNG of Eternal Glory to the Seals of Pure isn't worth the constant damage. The Seals of Pure I feel is the best. Uh, the reason why Last Word is so good is because it gives your uh, Word of Glory a 60% uh, increased chance of crit strike um, on targets that are 35% or less health, which is fine, but still really good. Um, uh, when you crit with your Word of Glory, it crits for a lot. If you watch my uh, 2v2 video, uh, you can see me and my rep retribution partner critting for about 85k, which is a lot. I mean, that's the cooldown top, but regardless, 85,000 for instant cast spell is pretty, pretty good. I want to talk about glyphs. <coughs> in the glyphs, you want to get uh, for the mage or for yeah, for the primes. You want to get um, Templar's verdict, Seal of Truth, and Word of Glory. The reason why you want Templar's verdict is because that's basically your main ability. That's your big part of your big burst. Um, your Seal of Truth because you really need the expertise nowadays. 
and your word of glory because like I talked about uh, the off healing of Rep Paladins right now are very good. <coughs> I see a lot of PvP Rep Paladins in Book of Exorcism. I don't know, I don't understand why. That's a PvE cliff. It really is not worth it. Um, the 20% of damage over 6 seconds is just not worth it. Um, the turn evil, uh, instant cast turn evil, the range on your hammer of justice, and your uh, mana reduction crusader strike for the majors. As for the minors, uh, get the two different glyphs because you're going to be going back and forth to slow the targets with justice. And kings or might. Might would probably be ideal for a rep paladin, but it's whatever. Um, those are definitely the best for rep paladins. Um, honestly, you could switch back and forth between turn evil and um, cleanse because you need to be cleansing a lot. And it takes up a lot of mana, but turn evil is probably the best. Now let's talk about gearing, gemming, and enchanting. So strength has always been a retribution paladin's friend. Strength is really the main stat you want to focus on. Uh, we are reforging currently uh, to mastery. For PvP, you want to be 5% hit capped. That is the PvP hit cap, 5%. I would recommend going a little bit over if you can't get directly on 5%, because being a little bit under could RNG screw you over. I've had problems with 4.9% where I've missed a hodge at the last second um, going for a kill. So I would recommend going a little over. Um, for the yellow sockets, uh, you want to get 20 strength or 20 strength, 20 resilience gems, the orange ones. Um, for the enchants, for shoulders and helmet, you want the strength, resilience that you can buy at the honor vendor. For the cloak, you want the mastery cloak. I got the 20, 65 crit uh, enchant on it. For uh, the red, you obviously want strength. For your meta, you want the 54 strength, 3% increased critical damage. For your bracers, you want the expertise. For your belt, you want the mastery. Now for the belt and the glove, you want to gem full strength. The uh, bonus is not worth getting the resilience or the hit. For the pants, I would recommend getting the 20 strength, 20 hit. Uh, it gives you the resilience um, soccer bonus. Uh, 190 attack power, 55 crit for the enchant for the pants. Uh, 50 mastery enchant for the boots, 20 strength, 20 resilience. Um, the best rings that you can get are the two ruthless rings, and you want to forge them the mastery. I have the two hit rings right now, just because um, I can't afford the ruthless ones just yet. I'm a human, so I don't have a PvP trinket. What I use is I use the on use, and I use the chance on hit. Uh, strength trinkets with resilience. Now, the reason why you want so much resilience is because as a rep paladin, people under people in the high racket know that you have the ability to off you. Um, so they're going to be focusing you. You can't heal yourself 50% more like you can on your partners. So they're going to be focusing you because one, paladins are easy to lock down. Two, um, when it's stolen freedom, they're pretty easy to kite. And uh, three, after the bubble, they're very vulnerable. So resilience is your friend. Um, if you're a human, get the, the on use and the, uh, the chance on hit. If you're not a human, get the on use and a PvP trinket. The reason why you want the on use trinket is because of your ability to utilize your burst. You want to be able to burst targets. You can off heal, you can burst, and you have some shitty CC, but most of all, um, your burst is what you're known for. So you really do want to burst. Okay? Um, I talk about how you can burst in my other video. If you want to check that out, it's uh, how to burst as a rep paladin. I have 40 strength in my relic. Yep. Um, it's reforged the hit and you need the 5% hit. If it's not reforged the hit, reforged the mastery. I got the Pyram Weapon Chain because why did I take it over Landslide? The RNG of the 1000 strength isn't worth the hit rating where I can reforge to mastery instead of reforging to hit. Isn't worth the hit rating and the uh, when we're disarmed, it's we're worthless. So uh, I took that over Landslide. And I looked it up, and uh, the majority of high-rated rep paladins did too. So I feel like I made the right decision. And what else can I talk about? Let's go into some macros. Okay, I want to talk about uh, modifier macros. What a modifier macro is is you are. It makes it so you are able to change 
where an ability will be directed to. Uh, an example of that would be uh, H is my repentance key binding. So if I wanted to repent someone, I would target them and then hit H. If I wanted to repentance his arena partner with this macro, I would hold down arena 2. So I would hold down, let's see, hit shift. So I would hold down shift and then hit H. Um, that's really good because uh, you don't have to get off of the target that you're trying to kill. You can continue to... Uh, keep pressure on that target and uh, you don't need a focus macro and uh, it really uh, it really can't be beat I currently am using a Razer Naga and I have buttons 1 through 3 uh, changed to control shift and alt for control is 1 shift is 2 and alt is 3 if you look at my macro control for arena 1 is 1 so 1 through 3 is different arena players makes it real easy. Um, so I use this for offense and defense. What I mean by defense is freedom. I use the same thing for party one, party two, and party three. Same thing for hand of protection, for word of glory, and for sacrifice. And if I uh, use right, this can be utilized very well. Very much so. um, I have my one shot macro um, for rep paladins. You can check that out in my how to rep burst video. Um, as for PVE, let's talk about add-ons. I use an add-on called CLC Rep. And the reason why I use CLC Rep is so not only kind of like a, a holy power notifier, but also a proc notifier. Um, it's not that good for PVE uh, P because it will tell you to use a Crusader Strike when your target's 15 yards away. And you probably want to be judging or using an exorcist and proc at that point. Um, it really is useful for PvE, but uh, I still use it for PvP just for like uh, an indicator. It will tell you to use Inquisition when you have three holy power. So it's kind of it'll let me know when I have three holy power and stuff like that. If I uh, hit this training dummy real quick, you can see how it goes through the different rotations. So it's pretty good. I would recommend it definitely for PvE years. Uh, for PvPers, I'm sure there's a different uh, PvP rotation, and I mean, like, really using a rotation add-on for PvP isn't really ideal, to be honest with you. I don't really use it as a rotation for PvP, I just use it as an indicator, like I said. Um, also, another thing I see a lot of paladins not doing in uh, PvE is using Seal of Righteousness. When you have two or more targets, Seal of Righteousness come, is doing a lot more damage on trash. Or even a uh, boss fight with two or more or two or more targets. Um, it's more of a tanking seal, so I can understand if you're not using it because you're worried about grabbing aggro. But if you're with a good group, a group you can trust, uh, seal of righteousness will increase your damage on trash bowls by considerable considerable amounts. Um, as for PVE, that's about it. I can look at my PVE spec real quick if you guys want. Um, so it's just a regular PvE spec. I did not get Selfless Healer. I got Divine Storm and Sanctity Battle. I got Seals of the Pure, and I went down and got Blazing Light. Uh, pretty standard PvE spec. Uh, that's about it. Alright, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask.